स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू द स्टडी ऑफ द लाइफ ऑफ द हाउस होल्डर ड्यूटीज ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण वी वे स्टडी रामचंद्र दत्त now we shall continue from where we had left it's not worthy that ramachandra datta was the first person to publish a biography of shri ramakrishna to build a temple for the worship of masters relics and to preach publicly that shri ramakrishna was an incarnation of god avatar his burning faith devotion renunciation erudition and his power to convince people made him an ideal evangelist and more important he had the blessings of his own guru shri ramakrishna himself had permitted him to do that he had also prayed to the divine mother to give him power from 1893 to 1897 he gave 18 lectures on shri ramakrishna's life and teachings at the star city and minerva theaters these lectures created sensations in calcutta at first some of shri ramakrishna's devotees objected to these lectures but Ramachandra Datta would not listen to them. On Good Friday, eighteen ninety-three, he began a series of lectures. The first of which was, "Is Ramakrishna Paramahamsa an avatar?" Ramachandra Datta substantiated his view through scriptural quotations, reasoning. empirical evidence and incidences from his own personal experience later on ramachandra datta realized that people would not listen to his lectures on shri ramakrishna because shri ramakrishna was an embodiment of renunciation and purity if ramachandra datta himself did not renounce lust and gold would they hear the people hear the talks of ramachandra datta on shri ramakrishna who was an embodiment of renunciation of lust and gold true religion according to shri ramakrishna is in uniting the mind and speech that is our thought our action and our talk sorry our speech yeah that is the talk now you should note that everything starts with the thought then it is converted into either speech or action because speech is also an action so now the thought if we are hypocritical our thought will be different our expression will be different 
So when we are spiritual, we cannot be hypocritical. Lord Krishna tells externally, if you have renounced and internally, if you are thinking of sense objects, then Sri Krishna calls them Mithyachari, hypocrite. So this, this very idea was expressed by Sri Ramakrishna in the form of true religion, according to Sri Ramakrishna, is in uniting the mind and speech. Man muk akkura. And now Ramachandra Dutta sincerely endeavored. That's why when we are taking some vows, we have to tell Yata Sadhyam Yatishyami. To the best of my abilities, I will try. So now Ramachandra Dutta sincerely endeavored to translate the master's teaching into his own life. So we may be telling in words that we are putting in the maximum efforts and really we will not be. So only the Lord knows our sincerity. He sees our heart. So that is very, very important. We have to be sincere. So Ramachandra Dutta sincerely endeavored to translate Sri Ramakrishna's teachings into his own life. Though Ramachandra Dutta held a good position in his office, he was never proud of it. And he never allowed himself to crave for a higher position or for worldly objects. You can see the two teachings of Sri Ramakrishna here that he is sincerely trying to put in the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna into practice. The first one you can see here, he was not proud of his high position in the office. Sri Ramakrishna used to tell, ego is of two kinds. One is the ripened ego and the other one is unripened ego. The dangerous thing is unripened ego which troubles us, which takes away from God is unripened ego. We associate with our education, qualification, with our money, with our wealth, with the people who are associated with and all other things. Now, Ramach Ra Ramakrishna Paramahamsa used to tell how to convert that into a ripened ego. You cannot remove your ego completely. So only convert it into ripened ego. How is that? Associate with God your ego. Now, if you are to be proud, be proud of your association with God, saints, with spirituality. Because of the grace of God, you are the child of God. So all these associations, being proud of these things, is called ripened ego. So now you can see he is putting that into practice. Ramachandra Dutta is not proud of his high position in the office. And what is the other thing? Ramachandra Dutta never allowed himself to crave for a higher position or for worldly objects. Again, Ramakrishna used to tell we should be like the leaf plate in olden days, even now many places in India. We use the leaf plate for food. So it is use and throw and it is good for health. It is natural, organic. So the leaf plate can easily decompose in the soil. It can become the compost. That's why it will not disturb the nature. So now even now many people use leaf plate for eating food or fruits or anything like that. So now Ramakrishna Paramahamsa gives examples of this leaf plate after eating. 
they will throw it to the dustbin. So sometimes it will be the dustbin. dustbin. Now if there is a wind or a gale, that leaf plate is carried away onto the street by the wind. Then it stays on the ground. Sometimes the wind may take it to the river. It may fall into the river. Sometimes it may be on the sand. Sometimes it may be under the tree. So wherever the leaf place is taken by the wind, it is happy. It stays there. So Ramakrishna Paramahamsa gives this example and tells wherever the Divine Mother or God places you or whatever position he keeps, be happy and contented and always dedicate your life to meditating on God, whether you are in difficulty, whether you are in happiness, whether you are in sorrow, whether you are in high position, whatever it might be. So be like that thrown leaf plate. Then wherever you are kept by the God, be happy. So now you can see that Sri Ramachandra Dutta, he endeavored to translate Sri Ramakrishna's teachings in his own life. He never allowed himself to crave for higher position or for worldly objects. If it comes by the will of the Lord, yes, it will be there. He would not crave for it. About food and clothing, Ram followed the simple path. Now, Lord Krishna tells that in Bhagavad Gita, Yukta Ahara Vihara Se Yukta Cheshta Svakarma So everything should be moderate, no extremes. Whatever, sleep, food, everything. Ramakrishna is also used to tell that. And Swami Vivekananda also in his teachings you can find. Moderation is always encouraged by Swami Vivekananda. So now here, following that teaching of Sri Ramakrishna about food and cloth, he followed the simple path. In spite of many duties connected with his jobs and his family, Ramachandra Dutta's mind was always on the master and the Kankurgachi Yogodhyan. Do you remember the teaching of Sri Ramakrishna? The tortoise, now it lays the eggs on the bank of the river or the sea, ocean. So, in the sand, it will make a hole, deep hole, and lay all the eggs there. Fill there, that hole or the pit with the sand again. Then it will go into the sea. It will be doing all its work for the water, wherever it is in the river or the sea. So whatever work it may be doing, it will be doing all the other work, but the tortoise mind will be on the its egg on the show. Likewise, Ramakrishna used to tell, you may do all the work, you serve your parents, you serve your kith and kin, you do all your work of the office, the office, the college, or any other work for that sake, the house chores. But always keep your mind on God. That's the teaching of Sri Ramakrishna. Likewise, Ramachandra Dutta, in spite of many duties connected with this, job and his family, his mind was always on Sri Ramakrishna and the Kankurgachi Yoga Dhyan, the ashram which he had built to worship and maintain the relics of Sri Ramakrishna. He lived with his wife and children at their Simla house, but he used to visit Kankurgachi every day. So he used to go to the house just for the namesake to live with his wife and children. But he used to visit Kankurgachi Yogodhyan, the ashrama which he had started in the name of Ramakrishna, serving the relics, doing all the seva of Sri Ramakrishna. 
that ashram which he had started after the demise or death of Sri Ramakrishna. Later on, he moved to Yogodhyan and took care of the worship service, gardening and cleaning by himself. So, what is the teaching concerned with that? Ramakrishna used to tell to the householders or anybody. In the beginning, you catch hold of God in one hand and you do the work of the world in the other hand. Later on, when you get the sufficient purity of mind, you have exhausted a lot of your karmas, then finally catch hold of God with both your hands. So that was the teaching of Sri Ramakrishna. So now you can see, first he lived with his wife and children at their Simla home. But he used to visit Kankurgachi every day. Later on, he moved to Yogadhyan and took care of the worship service, completely dedicated his life to the service of the ashrama. So he took care of the worship service, gardening and cleaning by himself. Sri Ramakrishna had taught his disciples, if you desire to live in the world unattached, you should first practice devotional disciplines in solitude for some time. So Ramakrishna used to always tell, he taught all his disciples, if you desire to live in the world unattached, before entering into the world, first you should practice devotional disciplines, gain bhakti, devotion to God, and then you have to jump into the world, worldly activities. So Ramakrishna used to give the example of the cutting of the jackfruit. You know, inside the jackfruit there is the terrible gum. So if you cut the jackfruit without preparation, then that gum will stick to your hand and to the knife and also to the ground. And it's very difficult to remove that gum. So what do the people, expert people who know about this, they do? They put the oil, in, rub the oil, smear the oil to their hands and to the knife and also to the ground. So they will make protective measures earlier and then cut the jackfruit. Likewise, Ramakrishna used to tell, before entering into the world, first gain devotion to God and then jump into the world. Then you will not be touched by the wrong aspect of the world or the difficulties of the world, you will not be attached to it. So, if you desire to live in the world unattached, you should first practice devotional disciplines in solitude for some time. Now. God tests his devotees in many ways. But a real lover of God is he who can overcome all temptation. So it will not be always smooth sailing or it will not be bed of roses always. So there will be difficulties, there will be temptations, there will be tribulations, unfavorable conditions. So whatever might be the external situations, we should not give up the devotion to the Lord. God tests his devotees in many ways. A real, a true lover of God is he who can overcome all temptations. Once a Calcutta merchant imported four shiploads of kerosene oil from England so those were the days of the British rule in India. Before marketing the oil, however, he had to bring a sample to Ramachandra Dutta for chemical analysis. Ramachandra Dutta tested the sample three times and found that it was shot by three points. So he would not approve the kerosene for marketing. The merchant was deeply distressed, for it meant the loss of millions of rupees. 
So he offered Ramachandra Datta a bribe of 40,000 rupees in those days. It was a huge amount, 40,000 rupees, to approve the merchandise. But Ramachandra Datta, who had been trained by Ramakrishna for truthfulness, sincerity, integrity. So, in spite of this temptation of 40,000 rupees in those days was a huge amount. He could never write a false certificate. Although Ramachandra Datta received many such offers, many such temptations in his life, he never deviated from the truth. So, remember the words of Sri Ramakrishna, a person who holds on to truth always will be always on the lap of the Divine Mother. In the Kali Yuga, Ramakrishna used to tell the real austerity, tapasya, is holding on to truth, telling the truth, be truthful. So you can see, in spite of the intense temptation, in spite of all these things, Ramachandra Datta would not give up truth. Ramachandra Datta's surrender to Sri Ramakrishna was phenomenal. So now, the aspect of surrendering to God, Sharanagati, that is stressed in the devotional scriptures. We all tell that, oh, we have surrendered everything to God. But they are mere words. But in action, we don't do that at all. So, but now you can see the real surrender, real attitude of surrender. So we can understand and practice that wonderful quality called surrender, self-surrender, Sharanagati. Only when we see some great saint practicing it in his own life. Otherwise, it remains just as a figure of speech. Until somebody practices that to some extent at least or to the greater extent, it will be very difficult for us to understand that and also bring that into our life. Now let us see how Ramachandra Datta, a great devotee of, household devotee of Ramakrishna, practiced self-surrender. Ramachandra Datta's surrender to Sri Ramakrishna was phenomenal, not ordinary. During the later part of his life, someone asked Ramachandra Datta as to why he had not saved even little money for his wife and children. All the savings, all the money, whatever he earned. Now, based on the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna, it should not be used for luxury, but it should be used for service to God. You have seen that earlier. Otherwise, that accumulation of wealth without using it for serving it to the, using it to the service of God and his devotees, it will create misery, it will create trouble, it will create attachment. So, literally, Ramachandra Datta followed it. So, by this we can understand that he, whatever money he had, he used it for the service of that Ramakrishna Yogodhyan to the devotees, serving the devotees, serving the poor, arranging satsangs, arranging bhajans. So, now a person asked him as to why Ramachandra Datta has not saved some, even some money for his wife and children, to which Ramachandra Datta replied, if I had wanted, I could have easily saved a lot of money, but I never felt that I was maintaining my family. I knew the Lord provides everything for my wife and children. And after my death, he will continue to do so. So now, that was the intense 
surrender, attitude of surrender which Ramachandra Datta had. He knew that even earlier, it is the Lord who is protecting his wife and children or whoever it might be, his near and dear ones. Even after his death, it would be the same Lord would be doing so. So he would just spend his energy, his earnings in the service of the poor, in the service of the needy, in the service of the devotees and also work of the Lord. He would not even preserve some amount of money to his wife and children because he knew that it is the Lord who will be providing for them. Now I remember once Winston Churchill, I think during his prime ministership, he was worried about the Germans attacking England and the problem faced by Great Britain. So he would not take food properly, he would not sleep, he would be always distressed thinking about his country and facing the problem as a prime minister. Now there was a butler in his house who was serving in his house from his childhood. He knew him, he had brought him up, he had served Winston even from his childhood. So he was very close to him. He had a lot of leniency towards Winston Churchill. So seeing his condition, this butler once asked Winston, Winston, why are you worrying so much? Why are you not taking care of your body and health properly? Then he told, so much a problem to Great Britain. I'm the prime minister. I have to take care of the country. I'm worried about my country and the countrymen. So that Butler asked him in a loving man, my dear Churchill, who looked after Britain before you were born? The Lord. Who will look after Great Britain after you are gone? The Lord. Don't you think that the Lord will take care of Great Britain even now? Then Winston Churchill could be relieved to some extent at least. So Ramachandra Datta always knew it was his Ishta Devata Ramakrishna who was taking care of his wife, wife of his wife and children, the whole world. So he was bothered only in the service of the children of Sri Ramakrishna, the Lord, the poor, the needy, the devotees. And he would not save much money. But when somebody questioned about it, he told, I could have made money, a lot of money I could have saved, but what is the use? I know the Lord provides everything for my wife and children. That was the intense faith he had in Ramakrishna. And also the level of Sharanagati, self-surrender. I know the Lord provides everything for my wife and children. And after my death, he will continue to do so. When one of the Ramachandra Datta's young daughters died on December 7th, from burns suffered in an accident, he endured that terrible grief. And to those who came to offer consolation, he said, the Lord gave me that daughter and now he took her away. Why should I lament? See, such was the faith, such was the intensity of self-surrender to the Lord that you can see how he took the death of her daughter, the love, so much intensely loved daughter when she passed away, how he took it. When one of the Ram's young daughters died on December 17, 7th, sorry, December 7th, 1886, from burns suffered in an accident, he endured that terrible grief and to those who came to offer consolation, he said, the Lord gave me that daughter and he took her away. Why should I lament? 
He would not even lament. He took it in such a great way that everything happens according to the will of the Lord. He completely surrendered. He knew that it was the body which was gone. The Lord Ramakrishna is taking care. I remember one great, great lady, a saint, Rabia al in Iraq. She was a Sufi saint. She was very much respected there in Iraq at that time. Now, she had two children. They were youths at that time. They had gone to the field. They were farmers through the agricultural field. And in the rainy season, due to the severe lightning, the two children, grown-up children, maybe both of them were in the age group of 16 and 18 or somewhat like that. Both of them died due to the striking of the lightning. The neighbors and the other people who were there bought the dead body of the children and placed it in the house. And seeing, and they were all crying and seeing that, what was the reaction of this great lady saint, Sufi saint Rubia Ladabia? She told, please don't cry. Help me to keep these two body of my children into the inside the room. Let me close the door. Let me prepare my husband who will come now after the work. He should be prepared for that. He should not have a shock. So I want to prepare him to face this death. So all of you, please go away. Do not lament. Do not cry. I want to prepare the death of my children so that my husband can face it. So all the neighbors went away. When the husband came, she told, my dear husband, I have a problem. Can you help me? Yes. Why not? What is your problem? The whole people of Iraq and surrounding, they tell that you are a great saint and they come for your counseling to get help from you and you want my help. Okay, what is the problem? See, our neighbor, he was very old. He was to go to the pilgrimage. He had ornaments, two ornaments, very precious jewels. So he gave it to me for safekeeping. You know, in those days, going to pilgrimage is very difficult, cumbersome. You may be attacked by the thieves. You may die out of it or you may return back or you may face so many tribulations while going to the pilgrimage. So that old man told, if I return back after the pilgrimage, you can return it back to me or else you can keep that ornaments for yourself. But now, if I return back, keep it safely and then give it, give it to me back when I come back. Otherwise, you can keep it. So he went to the pilgrimage. You know, that is walking and they didn't have the transportation and all the ways and means to find the ways to the pilgrimage, GPS or any other thing, telephone. So they had to walk, they had to find the way. So it would be many, many years. After many years, that old man came back. And now he's asking me for his jewels. But keeping that jewels for many, many years with me, I have developed attachment to that jewels. Now I'm finding it difficult to give it back. What shall I do? You advise me. The husband got a little upset. He told, what is that? They call you a saint. It's so easy. There is nothing complicated here. It belongs to him. What is there about the attachment? You have to give it quickly. There is, you should not brook any delay now. Give those ornament back to the rightful owner. Then the wife, Rabia Ladabia, took the husband, opened the door there, showed the body of the children and told the Lord, gave us these two children, the ornaments, precious jewels. It belonged to him, the Lord, for bringing them up and safekeeping. Now he is asking his that children belong to the Lord, his jewels. So he's asking it back. 
now let us give this jewel to the lord back please that was the way she prepared the husband then the husband asked him yes i am a father i have little strong heart i could okay withstand but you are the mother how could you withstand the pain and the reply of rabia was if you have faith in god you can withstand any difficulties in your life so faith in god so now we can see the same thing even more intense faith sharanagati you can see in the life of shri ramachandra datta ramachandra datta surrender to shri ram krishna was phenomenal now when his young daughter not one so one of the young daughters died one of the young daughters died on december 7 1886 from burn suffered in an accident he endured the terrible grief sahanam sarva dukkana apratikar purvakam chinta vilaparahitam sa titiksha nigadyate titiksha he endured the terrible grief and pain and to those who came to offer consolation he said the lord gave me that daughter and he took her away why should i lament it belonged to the lord the lord took it back so such was the intense sharanagati intense faith in ramakrishna ordinarily when people get together they love to chat gossip or criticize others now just watch when you yourself or any people gathering together when they are chit chatting or talking just watch just concentrate and just observe what do they talk it will be always paraninda paracharcha criticizing others talking ill of others talking about others paraninda paracharcha or atma prashamsa boasting of themselves telling about themselves so atma prashamsa or paraninda prachach these are the only things you can see so always talking ill of others always criticizing others so making yourself great comparing it with others judging others so these are the things ordinarily we do when people get together they love to chat gossip or criticize others but to ramachandra datta worldly conversation was like deadly poison he would not like it at all he would not encourage anybody to do that on the other hand he himself would never talk of worldly things he would always encourage talking about god and good things only so to ram worldly conversation was like deadly poison and he would not allow anyone in his presence to talk about anything other than the master or spiritual life only about his guru only about the teachings of shri ram krishna only about the life incidences of shri ram krishna or spiritual life nothing other than that if anybody would raise any other topic he would very politely in a very tactful way he would turn the topic to spirituality and the lord his ishta devata when he would talk about shri ramakrishna his face would beam with joy and tears would flow from his eyes his faith and devotion were palpable you can see ramakrishna in the beginning of the gospel telling that when you take the name of the lord if you can shed tears of love sincere love then you need not do your sandhya vandana or any other spiritual disciplines you have gained that high bhakti devotion 
feeling, acting, putting some glistening to the eyes and shedding tears is not meant by that. And Ramakrishna is not encouraging emotionalism or sentimentalism. Many people can shed tears even with little provocation. That's not the idea here. When your mind gets pure, when you take the name of the Lord, when you remember Lord, you will get the tears of joy. So that is a very high state. So when you can shed tears of joy, when you just take the name of the Lord or hear about the Lord, then you have reached a very high state of spirituality. Then there is no need for all the rituals, Sandhya, Vandana and other things. That's what Ramakrishna tells in the beginning of the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna itself. Now, you can see what a high state Ramachandra Datta has reached. When he would talk about Sri Ramakrishna, his face would beam with joy and tears would flow from his eyes. His faith and devotion were palpable. People could feel it. His intense faith and devotion to Sri Ramakrishna. People could feel it. It was tangible. It was palpable. He got some initiated disciples and he, chanted, and he changed quite a few lives. So by his touch, by his proximity, by his association, he could change many people's lives. Those people who were sinners, those people who were going out of the way, wavered, sinful behavior. So by his association, they became transformed. He could change quite a few lives through his spiritual power. You know, the prayer of Ramakrishna, you can see it. Ramakrishna prayed to Divine Mother, give the power to few of these people so that they can transform the life of people. And then I can do something. That was the prayer of Sri Ramakrishna. Now you can see many people changed their lives. Quite a few people through his spiritual power, he could change their lives. Every Sunday, Ramachandra Datta and his followers would sing Kirtan and dance barefoot through the streets of Calcutta. So he would openly through the streets of Calcutta singing, just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers. He would go with the musical troupe singing on the streets barefooted, taking the name of the Lord. He would sing Kirtan and dance barefoot through the streets of Calcutta every Sunday. Through the grace of his Guru, Ramachandra Datta had tasted the bliss of God. So he eagerly shared it with each and all. You know that many people will be bothered about their own liberation, their own spiritual progress. And they are not bothered about other people at all. But Ramakrishna used to give the example of the Ishwara Kotis and other saintly people. He used to give the example through the mango. If you give mango, some people will take it, eat it, and they will wipe their mouth in such a way and throw the seed of the mango and the peel in such a way that nobody will come to know that they ate that beautiful and tasty mango. But some other people, when they are given very good things, before themselves enjoying it, they will call many people, share it with others. They will also eat a little, but they will enjoy in the enjoyment of others, in the happiness of others. So they are called saintly people and Ishwar Kotis. Now, you can see Ramachandra Datta, he tasted the bliss of God by the grace of his Guru Ramakrishna. Now he was eagerly sharing it with each and all. 
Ramachandra Dattas, strenuous ascetic life at Yoga Dhyan. Earlier, he was leading a householder's life with all the luxuries and facilities. Later on, when he came to know, when he had to preach about Ramakrishna, who was the epitome of detachment, epitome of the giving up of Kama Kanchana, lust and greed. So he too has to lead a very ascetic life and austere life, give up everything. So now Ramachandra Dattas strenuous ascetic life at Yogatyan eventually affected his health. But he would not care. He was not bothered about his body. His only goal was God realization. In 1898, he had a severe attack of dysentery, which along with his diabetes and a painful carbuncle made it necessary for him to move back to his similar residence for treatment. Now he couldn't look after himself because of all these problems and ailments. So he had to move back to his family or to his house in Simla for treatment. His wife, friends and disciples devoutedly served him and other disciples of Sri Ramakrishna were able to visit him more easily. One day, Swami Vivekananda came to see Ramachandra Datta. You know, Ramachandra Datta and Vivekananda. Vivekananda in his earlier days, he was called Narendranatha Datta. They were very close relatives. So now one day, during this illness, Swami Vivekananda came to see Ramachandra Datta. It was a wonderful meeting of these two great disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. One, the great householder disciple and the other, the great sannyasin disciple, world famous Swami Vivekananda. So their meeting was really something very special. So it was a wonderful meeting of these two great disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. While they were talking about their old days with Sri Ramakrishna, Ramachandra Datta had to go to the bathroom Since there was no one else present, Swami Vivekananda himself helped him put on his slippers with his own hands. Seeing Swami Vivekananda's humility, tears came to Sri Ramachandra Datta's eyes and he said, Bile, that was how the father, mother, the elders, would call Narain in his childhood out of love. So he was born out of the grace of Vireshwara Shiva from Kashi. His mother prayed and vowed and did lot of puja here in Calcutta. There her aunt was living in Kashi. She prayed to Vireshwara Shiva every day at the same time. So for so many years, they did that vow, fasting, puja, everything. After that, the mother of Vivekananda got the dream where her desire of Shiva would coming, uh, come down as, his, as, her daughter, as her son would be fulfilled. So now, after that, because of Vireshwara Shiva, so he was called Bile narrates that Vireshwara from that Vireshwara, that name, the nickname or the name with which they would call him with love was Bile. Now Ram. Ramchandra Datta was also a very elderly relative of Narendra. He was even senior to his father. 
So now he is addressing him as Bile. Swami Vivekananda's family nickname. He is telling him, Bile, I thought that after traveling to America and becoming world famous, you would have forgotten me. And now I see that you are my same little brother, Bile. So Ramachandra Datta and Swami Vivekananda were cousins. Now, in spite of the best available treatment and care, Ramachandra Datta's physical condition deteriorated. He developed heart diseases. Sorry, he developed heart disease and experienced severe breathing difficulties, which also led to chronic asthma. He would pass sleepless nights chanting the name of Sri Ramakrishna. After a month and a half at his Calcutta residence, he had a premonition that he would not live long. He asked his wife and family to send him back to Yogodhyan so that he could die in that holy place where Sri Ramakrishna's relics had been installed. But the family members were reluctant to let him go there. Ramachandra Datta finally ordered a palanquin and left for Kankurgachi with his disciples. Where he arrived there, sorry, when he arrived there, he said, I have come here to have my final rest near my Guru, Sri Ramakrishna. He lived only five more days. On January 17th, 1899, at 10.45 p.m., Ramachandra Datta breathed his last. His body was cremated on the bank of the Ganga and the relics were placed next to Sri Ramakrishna's temple at Yogodhyana. Before he passed away, Ramachandra Datta told his disciples, When I die, please bury a little of the ashes of my body at the entrance to Yogodhyana. Can you imagine why he is telling like that? He is telling bury some of the relics at the entrance of the Yogodhyana. Why? Whoever enters this place, the devotees of Sri Ramakrishna, whoever might be entering this place will walk over my head and thus I shall get the touch of Sri Ramakrishna's devotees' feet forever. That was the humility, that was the devotion, that was the Sharanagati, that was the intense humility he had. He considered because Ramakrishna told, use all your wealth and money for the service of the devotees. And now even he remembers that at the time of the death, what a great devotee, what a great surrender. Now you can understand what his real surrender is. It is not in words, it should be in action. And what faith is, how much Guru Vakyasya, Shastra Vakyasya, Satya Buddhya Vadaranam, putting it into practice, the words of the Guru intensely, that is Shraddha. See, even at the last breath, he is practicing the words and teachings of the Guru and such a humility. He is telling that when I die, please bury a little of my ashes or the of my body at the entrance to Yogodhyana Ashram. Whoever enters this place will walk over my head and thus I shall get the touch of Sri Ramakrishna's devotees feet forever. That was the sincerity, that was the devotion. 
that was the way he put the practice that Ramakrishna had told you to serve the devotees with all your earnings. And he did it even in his last breath. But that attitude, that surrender, that devotion that the devotees of Sri Ramakrishna's feet to, should touch his head always. I will read that wonderful words of devotion, that surrender, Sharanagati again. Ramachandra Datta, the great devotee of Sri Ramakrishna told, when I die, please bury a little of the ashes of my body at the entrance to Yogodhyana. Whoever enters this place will walk over my head and thus I shall get the touch of Sri Ramakrishna's devotee's feet forever. That was the wonderful life. That was the wonderful way he put the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna into practice and he expressed his devotion. Once again, let us remember what is bhakti, what is devotion, what is pure devotion. How can I serve the Lord? How can I serve the children of the Lord? The word bhakti, we think that it is emotionalism, crying and then singing some bhajans, doing some arati and eating some prasad, going to the temple is bhakti. Yes, that is preliminary. That is kindergarten of bhakti. But in Sanskrit, the real meaning of bhakti is bhaj sevayam. Bhaj is the root word, dhatu. Root word, the bhakti word bhakti comes from the root word bhaj, meaning seva, service, service to the Lord. How can you see the Lord? You can't see the Lord. But do you remember? Ramakrishna telling Ramachandra Datta to think of, to meditate of God as unmanifest, without upadis, without limitations, beyond mind and speech is very, very difficult. The easiest way to meditate on God is on incarnation, the incarnation of God as human being. But still, there is another thing that is God as man, Ramakrishna told. Another aspect of that is God in man. To serve God in man, the devotees, the Lord manifests, the Lord is present in all the human beings. But his manifestation is high in the devotees, in the people who think of him always. By serving them, serving the devotees of the Lord, anywhere, anybody might be. You are serving the Lord himself. By serving the poor, by serving the needy, by serving the hungry, by serving the lowly, you are serving the Lord himself. So you have to see the Lord. Shiva Gnani Jiva Seva. Seeing the Lord and all the living beings and serving them. That is bhakti. That is real bhakti. That is practical Vedanta. So, as a great devotee, as a householder, in the true spirit of Sri Ramakrishna's teachings and life, the householder disciple Ramachandra Datta put all the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna into practice in a wonderful way. It's really touching the heart. It's really wonderful. It's so gripping. Tears of joy flows from our eyes when we read these wonderful incidents and the life of Ramachandra Datta. Let us read it again and again. Put that into practice. What is real Sharanagati? What is faith in Guru? What is devotion? So let us all read it again. Meditate on that. Put it into practice a little at least in our life and be blessed. So we have completed the study of the life of 
Ramachandra Dutta. In our next class, let us take up the life of another householder disciple. Until then, let us meditate on this wonderful aspect of the life of Ramachandra Dutta again and again be blessed. Thank you. Namaste. Om Priyatam Pundari Kaksha Sarva Yagneshwaro Harihi Tasmin Tushte Jagat Tushtam Prinite Prinitam Jagat Harihi Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Panamastu. Thank you. Om Namo Narayanaya.